Sorry, John. <laughs> Well, that problem is I said it by you. I can use this that way you don't have to be on the camera either. Unless you want to be on the camera. Oh, yes, please. Yeah, can like it right there. Yeah. It's right like this. Yeah, yeah really. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah. Thank Well, I just saw a couple of kids in the uh, here. Okay. Codes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But you know, you just... How many kids were there? Five or six? six or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's four four four. Four. Around six o'clock, we will uh, call our meeting to order. Our first meeting is the uh, annual organizational board meeting. We have a motion to approve that agenda. 
a motion. We have a second. second. All in favor, aye. Opposed, same sign. Agenda's approved. We need to go in and review our fiscal year 2021 depository statements. Julie, do you have any comments on those? Or? No. It's kind of a snapshot of the. Yep, snapshot at the fiscal year end. Um, everything looks pretty good. I guess I would just question you guys if you have any questions or comments. And the very last one, I think I can find it looks like this. That's um, that's an is good account. That's our construction stuff. So um, I didn't get much interest since the pandemic, but um, that's not going to be that when it started out with Miles Capital, um, and they were um, taken over by SJ. Next year, pretty much dwindling down. Yep. Any board members have any questions on statements? We have a motion to uh, approve fiscal year 2021 repository statements as presented. So moved. Motion, we have a second. Second. All favor, aye. Aye. Those same sign. Statements are approved. Next item is we need to review and accept the abstract of votes in the basic school board election. So we have an electronic copy. Um, uh, the County of Jasper abstract of votes. Um, John Northrup received 286 votes. Corey Robinson received 285 votes. Christina Roby received 118 votes. Christy Wiebeck received 100 votes. And there was a scattering of four votes. John Northrup is duly elected to the Office of the Baxter School uh, Director at Large for the term of four years beginning November 17, 2021. So, Corey Robinson is duly elected to the Office of Baxter School District at Large for the term of four years beginning November 17, 2021. Board so. members have any questions or comments on that document? We have a motion to accept the abstract of votes as presented. Second. So motion. We have a second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Those same sign. Abstract of votes is accepted as presented. Okay. Do we have any unfinished business? No. This time I'll accept a motion to adjourn. And organizational board meeting. So moved. Motion to have second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Meetings adjourned. We'll now move into our regular board meeting. Meeting to order. Looks like the first thing we have to do on that is with the office administer to us. Yep. John Northrup and Corey Robinson. If say you, um, you say I do. Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of Iowa, and that you will faithfully and impartially to the best of your ability discharge the duties of the office of school board in the Baxter Community School District as now or hereafter required by law? Thank you. Corey. Thank you. Okay. The next item on our agenda is election of board president. Anybody 
who would like to step forward. I want to help them through the process for that. So I'm also willing to serve again. So let's go. I'm Second. <laughs> we have a nomination and a second. Do we have any other nominations? No. John puts in a lot of time and I don't see even including ourselves probably. Yeah. Very much appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other nominations? Motion to cease nominations. Mm -hmm. Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All in favor of the uh, nomination as presented, signify by aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate it. Next item is approval of the agenda. Do we have any additions or corrections to the agenda? Do we have a motion to approve the agenda as submitted? Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, aye. Those same sign. Agenda is approved. Our next item is to adopt our procedures, time, uh, and date for our regular meetings. Anybody? Have any time that would work better, or has this worked pretty good? It's so really good for me. Seems like it's mm -hmm. good. good. So we'll continue on the third Wednesday at 6 p.m. We will adopt August rules of order used for our procedures. Somebody like to make that motion? We have a second. All in favor, aye. Those same sign. Motion to approve for our meetings to be the third Wednesday of the month at 6 p.m. <coughs> Next item on the agenda is approval of consent items. Any board members have any questions or comments on any of those? It's a coding, um, uh, learning how to code for, oh, for um, computer stuff. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. And those replacement flags, is mm -hmm. that for indoor? Outdoor. Outdoor. Yeah. So they're like right. huge. Yeah. Well, I was kind of surprised. I mean, they weren't outrageous, but there's four of them, right? Right. Yeah. No, they're right. We do pretty good with all flags. Yeah. And then on that, uh, stop those, uh, Classes. Yeah, those are your bus driver. Classes. Right, but on on the one Petermeyer and how come theirs is like twice as much as four people and all the others and they're 120 and then there's only two or is that just all together? It's all together. Yeah, okay. so they're each thirty dollars a piece. Okay. And actually, um, Carrie didn't attend, oh. and so he has reimbursed us. Oh, that okay. And he'll pick up another class. Um, he. <coughs> Most generally, um, if our bus drivers help help us out, help out the district, um, we'll take care of the stop class for them, uh, the cost of it. And then we also host it here. Um, but they have to obviously help us out in the driving. And that hasn't been the case up to this point with with that one. So okay. we'll see how that goes going forward. And I know I ask this every time that copier machine, but yeah. that seems like that was almost like twice. Isn't it normally like 400 and something, 95? And this was 885. Uh, 885 is the normal amount of money. Um, but you'll see a few other, um, there were, uh, uh, you'll see another expense for it. And do you remember? I don't think it was last month. I think it was the month before that they mm -hmm. sent us a bill and it was like $5,000. And I said, uh, no, 
And so um, we fought over that a little bit and they hadn't, they have the ability to um, electronic, electronically pull the copies yeah. and they hadn't done it for the entire time that we've had the copiers. So, or, yeah. And so when you see those, um, that fee on it, not the 800, but the other ones, um, that's really catching us up. Actually, I don't think we did it because I still questioned the amount that we have. So you'll see the okay. next one. Okay. Yeah, that's the right amount. Yeah. Um, yeah, because they, yeah, they gave us two bills and they were, after they corrected it and they were just a day apart from each other and two different figures. And so I questioned that again too. So you'll see that bill next month. So we've been paying on a lesser amount than we'd actually been making. Yeah. We always pay the 800, but then there's an additional, like, I mean, you saw you us, we were paying so like $30. Or we, were, we were paying like $30 a month or something like that. And because they weren't ever. Right. I don't I mean, know if they were. Their problem. Well, I've, I've argued that. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. Uh, yeah, because um, we figured out this is. We're starting on the third year of the new, newer agreement. Mm -hmm. well, thank you for putting on Johnson controls if that's an insurance claim. <laughs> I didn't want so to we go, don't need to. I yeah, we don't need to go ballistic. <laughs> Any other questions or comments on this? Concerns? And again, how are we being paid? Like for the coat for the lunches? When or how or every month? That? Oh, so okay. we still have to keep track of how many eat and right. and that, and then we're reimbursed a certain dollar amount that was determined um, at the beginning of the pandemic, um, and then um, uh, we submit that every month, and then the following month, then we get the money back. Okay. For it. Actually, a benefit to us, right? Um, you know, if we didn't have that, the kids were eating free, we would be wow, making that right. Right. Any more questions on the consent items? Hearing none, do I have a motion to approve the consent items? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor, aye. Those same sign. Consent items are approved. Respondents this evening. Moving into our public forum. Public is here that would like to speak. <laughs> well, you sent us an email, Sue. So I know. We knew I know. You were so speak, you know, there's so. a handout. Yeah. Jason doesn't have anything to write on anymore since I sent it by email. We're just going to have to have a little bit of 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 a little and uh, I wanted to use this for an analogy that goes with the equation that is also farther down in there. To achieve student outcomes, it involves curriculum, materials, teaching methods, and the students to get the outcome, but the students don't have any say so over the selection of the curriculum, the materials, or the teaching methods being used but they do respond to all three of those. So one of the things I wanted to point out with regard to each one of those first three, curriculum. With the passage of No Child Left Behind, each state was asked about a curriculum and then finally national was made available. I did look at what was posted for Iowa and the map was so embarrassing. I started lobbying the legislature immediately. Will you get that down off of there? The country just should not be seen that we don't know what map concepts are here. 
So that's why we have the national math curriculum based on concepts, but the others were all written within state. So they vary considerably as to containing concepts. So my reason for the analogy to the structure is that uh, several of them are still um, not as well structured and up to the national standards as they should be. That makes them weaker materials than what you might want. The math one, uh, while the, the components may be good, when you select bits and pieces out of them, instead of putting them all in there, you're left with big gaps in your foundation. So it's not a solid foundation when you're leaving parts of them out, which is what is being done in Iowa schools. That has an impact on student response when things are not all fitting together for them because some components are missing. The other is the selection of materials, which became very obvious during last year's pandemic when everything was out there online. And we could see that all the states that are doing a better job rank wise um, on NAEP had much better materials that they were actually using that students were doing a better job. And the other would be teaching methods. And yes, a lot of changes have been made, but they're also dependent on these other two components and all the students do is respond to them. So those are the components of the equation that I provided here. But the big thing that I wanted to emphasize is the fact that Iowa has this long history of when what they're doing, students are not responding to, they're calling the students defective. That came through our era of memorization. And the whole reason that businesses and the military finally got Congress to pass No Child Left Behind, followed by Every Student Succeed, stop discriminating against the students and do a better job with these other three components here. And that's what we have a problem doing. Now, I realize this is a big change for everybody involved in education now, because unless you went to a private school or attended a school outside the country, you probably came through a system of memorization. That's your background. That's my reason for including the steps. At least two of you should be familiar with, if not the others, of scientific method on there for being able to assess material and make decisions. Think of it as a form of exercise, like you do exercises to build muscles. Really working on this can increase the thinking and problem solving brain things that you're working on here. So that hopefully a better job can be done in reviewing the curriculum that's being used, the materials that are being used in addition to the teaching method to reduce the stress on the students and stop blaming them as being defective because we haven't completely moved away from that yet and it's causing them additional stress in addition to the other types of stress. Now the link and the information I provided last time shows from the uh, US News reports but they're from what I brought Nate before and I was falling into the bottom half of the country 25 states are doing better at the national standards and what Iowa is doing. And then also remember that in terms of skills at graduation, Iowa now ranks 40th in the country. So more work could be done to improve these other components and help the students out to also help reduce their stress. And yes, more support systems go. But one last thing, and I included it at the very end of the email that I sent, it's a reminder that what's in no trial or not no trial left behind essa every student succeeds has to do with the civil rights of students so when you fall back on blaming them without effectively assessing these other three components you're actually violating their civil rights that's one of the points that's in there one of the things the states have to start doing a better job at so i was hoping that by providing some analogy and some direct quotes from the Departments of Education website that maybe this will give you something more to think about. That's my hope anyway. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody else have anything in public forum? Um, I'd like to. Uh, so I'm 
Mr. Archer, the music teacher, K-12 at Baxter. And I brought my associate, Mr. 2 by 4 also known as things that are currently hanging up all of the curtains on the gymnatorium stage. Um, so as you can see, I'm rather old. I've been told it's probably been that way for about 40 years without a change, um, which is scary to me. Uh, some of them are bending, some are being held up by spraying rope and chain. Um, and so I'm just here to make sure that we at least take a look at that. I'm not sure if that was a conversation that was going to be had tonight or not, but I wanted to bring that up. And I also wanted to just throw out the idea that it will take about, I've been told, $6,000 to fix that stage overall from what I've talked with about our maintenance manager and things like that. But I think that we could have more. Um, one of the reasons that I came to the school and one of the reasons that I was very happy to come to the school was because over and over again throughout the interview, throughout the hiring process, even when I got here, is that this community is very supportive of raising money for the school when it needs something. So I was thinking instead of trying to fix the stage out there and having to continually go back and fix it, to open up the idea of building an auditorium. I know that was discussed on part of the building plans when we remade it, but it ended up being too much altogether. But I think that would just open up a ton of new avenues for us and quite frankly, could probably end up paying for itself in a lot of ways. If we have community, community events there, like for example, I was thinking if we had a movie nights like three times a week there, we charge five dollars for people to come in. We have a hundred people come in. That's you know seventy-eight thousand dollars in an entire year. If we have a hundred people come in, pay five dollars. We have concession that adds another you know if they pay five dollars for concessions. That's another seventy-eight thousand dollars right there to help pay for the stage. Um, and then not even mentioning the amount of thing, other things we could do for the community. <laughs> clubs, activities, we could rent out the auditorium for various different things. We could stream football games that are away in different places and charge entry for those so that we can pay and help support the football team or other sports that are away that are getting filmed and streamed. Um, I talked to some of my older teachers and they talked about show choir competitions. Um, and while we don't necessarily need to do show choir competitions here, they charge schools about $250 to $325 to come and host them at the school. So that's per school. And then not only that, all of those schools would bring students. They would have concessions that students would buy from the school. So that's even more money that you're getting in as you come in. So it, it's a lot of different ways that we can pay for that. That's not you know necessarily the immediate thing. But again, I brought was brought here that and told that we could raise money as a community very easily. And so I just want to open that up as a possible something to think about rather than just putting a Band-Aid on the issue that's in there right now. And we will have on their agenda talking about <laughs> the state. So. Uh, any other public forum? That's Christy. So. Two questions. Since this is a public forum, shouldn't the video feed be so that the public can see the speakers, including yourselves and us? Turn it. We had it the other way and we had people complaining that the things were well. Forward, so, I mean, so honestly, now? this room isn't set up very well. So. Agree. I mean, we need to probably look at another reason so, for an auditorium. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Good evening. This evening, I have three topics I would like to have the board discuss and share their intended response plans to address these ongoing concerns at Baxter Community School. During the October meeting, I shared a concern regarding the resources in response for violent student outbursts and threats. As Dr. Clapter and Mr. Luther mentioned in the meeting, we've had dis productive discussions with the two of them. My husband and I took these concerns to the Baxter City Council meeting last week to understand more the response plan between the school and the city. And it appears there is significant disconnect. 
please share how you have addressed these concerns as there was an additional incident resulting in a school evacuation on October 27th. What have you done to review the safety plan and policy related to student threats? What resources have you resourced? And are you planning the resource so that our administrators and counselors aren't in a state of crisis response and are in the position of proactive deterrence? Second, in September, I brought up concerns about the social justice and literature course, and I've had multiple back and forth conversations with Mr. Luther and Dr. Clapper, including a meeting. What is the board's position on offering a social justice and literature course at Baxter Community School that is pushing on the edge of House File 802, which restricts the teaching of critical race theory, among other topics, and the social justice and literature course, having the students create an action plan at the conclusion of the course. Third, related to the prior question, my husband and I had a meeting with Dr. Clapper and Mr. Luther and Dr. Clapper and Mr. Luther mentioned that the literature content was a serious concern that was being raised on multiple fronts and you all were included on some of those communications. I personally know there have been many conversations throughout this community on concerns around literature and literature that's being offered in the school. I would like to know what the board is doing to establish a review policy of all literature being used in curriculum here at Baxter Community School and the planned implementation of the policy, including the immediate removal of literature that is breaking school conduct policy and teaching sexual in nature content, racist and sexist idea, ideologies, and is part of the standard teaching material at our school. This evening, please respond to these concerns that have been raised by the parents in this community and the community who you are elected to serve. Share your plan to establish a school policy regarding the literature and be prepared to share the policy publicly at the December meeting. Additionally, I would like to be kept informed on the process with weekly updates between now and the December board meeting for our community to know what the plan is for the literature that has been raised to this administration and board to be reviewed and removed as appropriate from the curriculum here at Baxter. I've already had meetings with Mr. Clapper, or Mr. Luther and Dr. Clapper regarding these issues. To be clear, this request is for this board to discuss and share publicly your response this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? No, I just support both of them on both issues. We'll move into our business items. First item there is the National FFA Convention presentation. We're all really excited about it. I'm Joe Ryder. I'm Holly Vernis. Julie Damon. Lori Manson. We're uh, on the National FFA trip. There was two others that joined us. Ashton Gruen and Lily Van Stuyce both have part of the trip tonight, so they wouldn't really make it. Is that Indianapolis? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. I would recommend for the Apple TV. Yeah, I'll watch it on the phone. Good trip out. Yeah. yeah, it was definitely a lot of driving. It was long. Yeah, yeah. 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 ye
So six of our members, as we already said, went on this trip. There was a list of all of us, but he said two of us had prior commitments, so they could not make it tonight. But yeah. The Baxter Cafe was picked up by a Star Destinations ch charter bus outside the Ag Building at 3 a.m. on October 27th. <laughs> we then traveled to Indianapolis for the National Convention. Our FFA chapter traveled with five other FFA chapters on the bus. These chapters were Tom Maxwell, Knoxville, Twin Cedars, Nevada, and South Hurston. Are you of the trip to Nevada? professional development, lesson plan development and ideas, meeting advisors and new contacts and good fellowship among chapters and members. Final of the trip to members. So we got to introduce members to FFA on a national level, explore and understand the large city in the, in the US and college career exploration with the career fair, explore the FFA shopping mall and exhibit, exhibit mall, Develop strong social and communication skills by talking with other chapters and meeting people from different states. Um, day one started with the opening session of the 94th National Convention. And it ended with the World's Toughest Rodeo. Day two was Southside Landfill Tour, where we learned about how one of the largest in Indianapolis of landfill areas takes care of all the trash to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the city at all and then we learned about how they also have a golf course as the buffering system in between the garbage and the town. The career show and expo. Day three was on our fisheries where we went to one of the largest fish hatcheries in the U.S. They have two locations but this was just one of them and they are the prime supplier for koi and goldfish. Their number one client is Amazon. And we were able to get to see how they box up these fish to transport through Amazon, which was really, really neat. Nice. We left the convention on October 29th around 4 p.m. and got back, to back, got back to Baxter on October 30th around 12.30 a.m. We got some extra pictures of along the trip. Yes, so on this one, there's multiple different famous people that we got to meet there as within the career and exhibit area. On there is Dale Brizzy mm -hmm. and then the farm tractor people are from Des Moines. Backtrack thanks you for your support and your time tonight. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any questions? <laughs> Personally, my favorite part was the college exploration that we got to do. We got to talk to a lot of different agricultural colleges that I personally didn't even know existed. And it really opened my eyes to a bunch of different directions I could go that I had never even thought about before. So it was really, really neat to see and consider. Do you guys thought about no. Yeah. Last year it was online and virtual was in the COVID, so this was the first year that we could make it. Because you can't go till you're in yeah. high school, so. Yeah. Are you guys doing this all again? Yes. Or, okay. Should, at least. Yeah. <laughs> also, I don't know about any of you guys, but this is the first big city I have ever been to in my entire life, so it was just like a wow factor. Yeah, yeah, it was a culture shock for sure, but it was really neat to be able to see that difference. And really, it wasn't, and really, it's not that far from here, but mm -hmm. such a different environment. What was the best food you had? So, I honestly think the best food that I had was the food trucks that they had by the stadium. And we ended up standing in the rain for an hour, like I think. Two hours. <laughs> hour and a half. Was it worth it? It was worth it. Was. It. <laughs> it was actually. <laughs> My feet might have gotten numb. But the tacos are nothing worth it. My um, personal favorite, I went with a different chapter that was on our bus to a burger place that was walkable from the convention. Yeah, we got to eat 
We got close with quite a few other chapters and kind of just paired off with them. We were just able to we were all together and like we got to enjoy the conference with other people in front of us. And will you stay in touch with us? Oh yes. 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 We've all been so talking happy. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Good. We're able to like states out of the Midwest, you know, we've kind of got our ag system here. Yeah. Talk to different states how they approach mm -hmm. ag and what their yeah. reports are. We talked to a few people from Florida and Alaska. Um, I think Ashton had talked to some people from just a whole bunch of different states and just different how they do different types of things with their farming. And uh, uh, trend among national convention is trying to see how many chapters you can talk to and get pictures with. And the goal is to get all of it. And mm -hmm. what'd you get? We actually didn't take pictures. We just talked a bunch. I think we got five or six different yeah, states. Yeah, we didn't. We did not. Ashton was more of the social one over here. There was also a chapter with was it from Puerto Rico? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. That was very interesting to see them there too. Yeah. yeah. In Hawaii, they were there. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Hawaii was there. They. I they know. only had like twenty three chapters that went. Yeah. Alaska had 11 in total, right? Oh my yeah. gosh. There's the chapters coming from faraway states. There, you'd be surprised at how many people they had. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Which was what we got to learn at opening sessions, too. They did a slideshow and they did every single state and how many people came from each state. And just some of the numbers up there were insane. Like, yeah. Texas was over 10,000 people from Texas alone. And that was just mind blowing to me. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's a Further drive than we have, obviously. How many to Iowa have? Well, I think um, it was around it was a thousand something. Yeah, it was a thousand something. There wasn't as many for Iowa, but we kind of have a smaller state compared to right. quite a few of the other ones. I just like to, I just like to tell the board that I thank you for your support over the last four, three and a half years now um, with the Ag Department and FFA. And I just want to mention that these four young ladies and Lily and Ashton did a good job representing the school and your community. So it's something to be really proud of. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks for your And the next item on our agenda is the building project update. There's not really much of an update on the unit ventilators. We're still waiting to hear back from the other companies. A couple of us have all said, yeah, we'd be willing to pay for that, but not everyone has chimed in yet. So just don't know much about that yet. Uh, the next thing that the bus radio situation. So I don't think we're ready to move on that yet either because um, we have a couple of bids, but as of right now, the antenna is still on the building and still working. Still working. So they're going to be at some point taking it down. Um, but I don't know that we're ready to move on it yet just because once it comes down, we're going to have to do something different. But um, there's just a few options of like, do we want to do just kind of replace the stuff we have? And that was like $8,000 or so. But then um, Greg and Pam are working on getting some quotes and Deb um, for like a, kind of an upgraded system that you, instead of buying all this the equipment, you just lease it. But then it upgrades over time, but then there's like a monthly fee that goes along with it. So um, we're, we're not really ready yet to um, make a decision, but I just want to keep in the loop. But as of right now, we're just kind of holding steady until I get the quotes from those guys back on that. Was Mr. Padgett able to look at the well, antenna we got and see if that we put it out at the complex or? Well, uh, we don't have an antenna. So okay. that's the problem. The antenna that we had was on the third story or on the old three story building. And when the building came down, it got demolished with it. So we've just been using the one um, on the Caltech building. And since that building's being sold, uh, we don't know that. We'll be able to use that 
the tenant anymore after it's building. <coughs> so that's kind of the problem we're facing is we don't have enough now. Okay. That actually belongs to us. But we don't know if, you know, possibly over time, if whoever buys that building would rent us in a use or something like that. Um, we just have to wait and see when that sale goes through and then reach out to the owners. And then the other one is actually exactly what um, Zach and Zachary talked about is uh, we, we do have the quote for $6,000, $6,110 for the, um, to, to repair or to dig down the curtain and repair it. But instead of doing that, I like the idea of actually putting together a, a plan of whether it's to build an auditorium or to even just renovate the gym auditorium we, or the gym with the stage we have. But putting together like a, a phased in plan so we can find out, you know, what is it that the music and, and drama uh, people really want and need? I don't, I'm not an expert in music and drama by all means. But what is it, what are the things that we need? You know, do we need new lighting? Do we need, you know, to update the stage? One of the things that was brought to our attention is a lot of places aren't even um, really using stages anymore. They're getting better lighting and they're, you know, they'll kind of renovate the actual like background of the stage. And then, um, so then in between scenes, they turn the lights out and they change the scenes and then they turn the lights back on and, um, so, I mean, we just, instead of like, exactly like what Zachary said, instead of putting a bandaid on this curtain situation, I think it'd be really advisable if we just put together a plan, you know, work with the music people and, you know, Rob has some expertise in drama. Like, what is it that we could do and how much would it cost so we could start to get a target of this is what we want to do and this is how much it's going to cost and we can start to put in a phased plan, like with our facilities um, dollars and then, you know, fundraise as well, like just like you said, because before when we asked about, and this was when the building project was just starting, so I know costs have gone up, but at that time they talked about putting in an auditorium would be $4 million. So um, I'm sure it's gone up even since then. So that's a lot of fundraising. So obviously, maybe there'd be someone in the community who'd want to donate that much. I don't know. That'd be <laughs> awesome. We should definitely tap into that. But um, anyway, so even if, if building an auditorium wasn't feasible for us, how could we use what we have and make it nicer, make it like, attractive and make it appealing? So I think um, I agree with Zachary that putting $6,000 into repairing the curtain might not be the best use of our money. So I would think we should just table this for now. And I know we have a plan like for the music concerts to do the, um, on the floor, to choose the risers on the floor. If they don't feel like it's safe, we can get by until we can come up with like a really solid plan and and get you know community input on and how would we want to use it and what would what would be our dream and then even if we can't do our dream what could we do that's at least feasible so um i recommend not replacing this the curtain right now and just using the floor but in the with in the same uh breath say i think we should put together a plan so to, much like the sports complex you know i'm on that committee Corey's on that committee a bunch of community members are on that committee. Have you guys thought about forming a, a committee of community members? And you know what I mean? To I mean, this just kind of formed in my brain. Uh -huh. I haven't, this the auditorium thing I just thought of very, fairly recently, so I didn't bring it up to boosters yet. Sure. But um, yeah, that would be something I'd be open to building. In I mean, it's kind of working. similar, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. And I think it's something that we can, you know, work together on. And I wanted to, I forgot, Julie, you were supposed to remind me, remember, to talk about the booster? Uh, oh, one, two. Yeah, so anyway, I'll, I'll talk about that. I'm sorry, I was like, I'm joking here. But um, <coughs> last time when, when Zachary was um, bringing up the amount of money we spend on uh -huh. sports versus music, um, I John actually asked us to look into it. And so um, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what we've spent. Um, so in the activity fund, in the audit that he was talking about, that refers to music and that was $9,595 and football was $20,895. However, the vocal and band departments are also provided financial support at their request through the general fund, whereas athletics, um, like football doesn't get it through the general fund, um, except some of that safety equipment. 
And then also the athletic boosters have donated on average $24,000 a year for the last six years. And they do that in the form of grants, concession, um, concessions, obligations, and general donations to help with uniforms. Um, and so in the, the music boosters have not directly donated to the district since 2011. But I also want to say, like, that's not to say that they're not donating. It's just um, the athletics booster club falls under the umbrella of the school. So we know how much they've donated, but I know the music boosters put a whole bunch of money into the um, sound system in the, the old gym, except the bills went right to the music boosters. So we just don't have a record of how much that costs. So I can't say they donated X amount, but we know that they are very helpful and that they donated for that. We just don't have those dollars. So they don't show up on, in our books. So Why I, is that different? It's kind of, there's some groups that do it like dance team has their own account. I don't they still have their own account mm -hmm. or drill team. And they keep their own account at their own bank. And then we don't oversee it. Whereas athletics or like the athletic boosters, they've decided to put their accounts under the school's umbrella. And so we do help oversee it. Um, and Julie, can you can, see? yeah, for sure. <coughs> she helps. So <clears throat> the athletic boosters basically um, meet with our ADs on a regular basis and determine what the needs are of the district for the athletics. And then they um, proceed to go out and fundraise for us and then, um, or for the students. And then, and they uh, provide a donation to the district through different ways. Coaches can actually just go directly to the athletic boosters and ask them for a grant or for something that they want for themselves okay um so that's also an addition that they can do but anyway so then the athletic boosters writes a check to the district and that goes into the athletic account which is where um, you got those um, numbers and then we pay for the expenditures out of that uniforms things like that um it really hasn't happened like that with the music boosters. That's not to say that we can't. It just it just hasn't happened like that. Um, we do have an account under the Education Foundation that I believe has um, just a little over three thousand dollars in it um, that uh, was asked if we would bring that under the Education Foundation um, for the simple reason that to uh, be a 501c3, it takes some money to get that done, um, established bylaws and, and things like that. And a lot of those nonprofit organizations don't have the ability to do that. With the Education Foundation, they're a 501c3 nonprofit. And so they ask if we could bring a fund under, or they could come under our umbrella. And so then for large ticket items or large trips, you know, because um, I know in the past they've went on, you know, some trips. And so, and yes, that was fine. And so the community may donate to that, or if they have fundraisers that are going to something specific, then they may put it in that account there under the guise that it's a, it's a, a, a tax write-off under a formidable 501c3. But that doesn't show up in our yeah. district. That's Education so Foundation, education which is completely separate. Right. Yeah. Well, so. I, I do think our community is extremely supportive in whatever we feel the students need. I, I, think, I think they just need the to first step is just put it out there. Yeah. Getting a group of people yep. and ideas. And yep. I mean, I know that I feel like the athletic one's a little slow moving, but I mean, it is formed and we've met several times and kind of have an idea. I think that could be the same for the music mm -hmm. and drama. And we do. We have music boosters. We've been meeting for a few years. Right. And I'm just saying, and like, 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 it's a building project, project. Like for, for a project. For just that project. There's a, a committee yeah. that's uh, meeting occasionally. We haven't met in a while, but to put like a a building out of the sports complex. Mm -hmm. So you see those sketches down by the gym when you come in. That that's a committee that put that together and brought it to us, saying this is what we want. Um, and so now it's to the now we have to fundraise for it because it was what million dollars for yeah. that so we know that the district does, <laughs> yeah so that's why it's kind of slow moving because the district you know we don't have a few million dollars to put at a we have building. to be a little bit careful in um what the committee looks like um if if we um it it really needs to be a commute community committee um because we just 
um, bonded for a building project. We don't have the capacity to bond anymore. And so we have to be careful with how many people um, from the district um, are represented on there, because then it looks like the school, it, the district is trying to raise the funds and trying to, and then taxpayers think, oh, you know, my taxes are going to go up again and all this good stuff. So we have, we have to walk a fine line while we want you to bring it to us and bring all your requests to us and things like that. And, and we do have a couple of members that sit on it. Um, we just have to be really careful about how we present that to the community and to the taxpayers. Rob, do we have a play this year? No. Uh, not on the calendar. We have no one to do drama. So Crystalline is was the drama instructor who we're right now. We don't, I, don't, I don't even know if she's resigned that position yet. I haven't asked Julie. She has not so yet. Kind of, it's usually in the spring. It's but we're kind of sitting still, on that we're waiting on it. I did have one other. Uh, I've done it in the past, would strongly encourage myself not to do it this spring. <laughs> uh, we've had one other person just kind of reach out and say, I'm not saying I would do it. I just, where are we at with it? So. And the, the reason I ask is I, I had Bill and Pam look at that to see if we're going to keep the existing curtains to oh. redo the structure above that holds them. Yep. And I think story construction looked at it and they said, you could use unistrut steel on the bottom of the existing steel trusses. And they thought that that's something that we could do ourselves with the district with scaffolding and that, like a summer project. Right. So, I mean, that's something I guess to, to keep on the plate is, you know, if it's something we want to do, it's going to be less than $6,000 if we use our own employees at this many materials, a thousand or two thousand dollars. So, but if we want to keep those curtains, that'd be a way to do that. But be the summer type yeah. projects. So. Uh, one opinion, which is for whatever it's worth, I think from the theater side of things, I don't want to speak from the music side of things, just with a had more background than I've had lately. But you go to those, go to school, there's very little curtains being used as I go to high school plays or seeing. They just went away from that a lot. I think one because the cost, lighting takes care of them. But when we grew up, it was let's close the curtain, let's change the set. And now lighting changes that. And some are lighting definitely needs to be that from new and Baker and I did one 13 years ago and we had to rent lighting and come in. Um, I think theater itself could be very uh, creative and what that looks like, whether it would on a stage or in a commons or, I mean, I remember back in the day we did lunchbox theater in the lunchroom just to have kids perform. It doesn't need to be the curtain and on the stage. We're set up for that now because of that stage being there forever. But I would just my opinion question putting a lot of money into a curtain when you can put it in lighting, you can put it in. I mean, you're getting curtains on the, the you know, in the wings and, and back just for, for performance. But that big curtain in front, I don't know what the I just think it would be helpful to kind of have like a group of people that had like it broke down into <coughs> steps of what really needed, kind of like mm -hmm. the, the sports thing. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. For sure. Anything else on that subject? We'll move on to our principal's reports. Rob, you want to go first? Sure. Uh, not not a ton. It feels like um, it's really. I almost start putting things that felt back to normal, and I hate using that the new normal, or whatever. But it was a month for me that was in classrooms, and just felt like we were just moving along without the big had some, some hiring, which I'll talk about at the bottom for me, and some some sports stuff. But uh, Wendy's doing a great job. I've worked with Wendy each week, just kind of developing our PD plan. Um, Really, where we want to go with some walkthroughs and ju just even a, even our CIA team meeting has been real productive and, and with high high reliability school. There's there's some good work. It's a long way out, but I feel like we're gaining just a little bit of momentum that we haven't had for a couple of years. Uh, just some 
uh, housekeeping stuff to make sure we get it in the notes and for the board to be aware, which I'm sure you are. One to recognize the Veterans Day Assembly. We didn't have one a year ago, so there's the new normal. Greg Christensen, hats off to him, uh, really took that lead this year. Um, one thing I love, we don't do a 10 K-12 uh, with everybody in one space. So it's great to see the whole K-12. I think it's a really important this, this year was quick, 30, 35 minutes to understand why we're in there and, and what Veterans Day is and what it's about. And Greg does a nice job with that. I don't know, we had probably eight, nine veterans join us uh, from the community. Um, wanted to recognize uh, the Hall of Fame, which is something else we didn't do a year ago. So we're having our Hall of Fame game on December 17th, bringing in four from 20. 20 and then four new inductees from 2021. One is sitting at our table. Congrats to Mr. Robinson who will come in with the Hall of Fame. But that's, you know, putting it together feels like it's a lot of work and it is, but it's such a great thing to recognize Baxter graduates for their efforts when they were here and their families to come back. And um, I'm excited to get everybody back in person and to have that night uh, at the ball game. We'll actually recognize those eight people. Uh, between the girls and the boys game. They set out with their table in the commons, light snacks, but everybody can walk around between the games. And it's fun to look at memorabilia and look at old old uh, trophies or whatever the people bring. So we'll have eight people and we'll get those in the, in, in the December minutes and some, some info. It'll go out. We just put it in the newsletter today for the December, January with everybody's bio. So everyone will see them. Uh, Parent-teacher conferences since the last time we met. Um, this fall, we did them in person. Most of some of you around the table, I'm sure, had conferences with teachers. Um, I personally, and I think our staff, like the fall in, in large room that feels more open house. Just with COVID, we didn't do that. But I would see us going back to that for the fall and then uh, doing spring um, schedule. But uh, it was a good couple nights. It's always great to see parents in the hallways, normal, talking to teachers, running, going through the hallways and visiting with people. So that was great. Uh, winter sports are, it's, it's just flying. I mean, you just feel like we're talking about fall. Now we're winter and hats off to everyone who had a hand in getting out. I was just out watching wrestling practice tonight. 18 kids out for wrestling. Um, wow. It was full. It's like already, man, I've been, it felt full, which is great. When you stepped out there the first time, it just felt cavernous. And this is huge. It is huge. But then you get 18 wrestlers and four coaches and it, it fills it up. Uh, Zach and I have had a great time the last week just brainstorming all the things we can do for the multi-purpose beyond wrestling, uh, whether it's dance or renting it out. We're talking flooring and golf simulators and, and batting cages and a million things that we can do out there that we haven't had the opportunity to do before. So that's great. Uh, a couple kids that I just want to recognize uh, that I think are really important. I don't think I recognized Morgan Ratliff last month. Um, she made the all Iowa dance team for the second year in a row. So really that's the dance teams all state, which hats off to Morgan. Ellie Toon ran at state for us, but also was recognized. She just missed out on the, on the podium there. I think she was 16, but she was recognized as an all state runner um, by, the, by the cross country and track coaches association. So she will be an all stater for us as well. Uh, got some great news just in the last couple of weeks that Rory Hare was named. Every year they do this. It used to be the Wendy's High School Heisman, and now it's just the High School Heisman that is an offshoot from the Heisman. Uh, it doesn't have to be football in the state. It's not all about athletics. It's a lot about giving back in your community and service, um, service oriented. We always have someone we recognize. This was uh, the first time ever uh, Rory Hare won the Iowa High School Heisman. So he is the one boy in our entire state that was recognized by the Heisman, which came with a scholarship as well. So that was a, a, an outstanding honor for him. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's where I'll go. I got the big one, but I know it's going to be late night, so I'll just table it for next month. So it's good. That's it. It, it was it's, it's good. It, it, it was ironic. And it, it, Sue talked about the US World Report in hers, which I had that written down. So I got an email. This is the Cliff Notes version. I got an email from US uh, News and World Report that our, our high school is the 47th in the state out of 335. So you start to do that and you think, well, that's top 15%. That's pretty awesome. And then I looked at the schools that were there and we're like the th only the third highest 1A or what I would consider small school in the state. You see the Valleys and the Johnstons. And so, you know, you start looking at that list and 
I dug into why we're as high as we were, and there's a lot of factors that are really, you know, awesome to have to celebrate. It's one measure, you know, so you can come in and, and it, it, our, she, our state isn't as high as it used to be, but if we're just looking at the Iowa, which they sent me in the, the list, I mean, that's awesome when you see Baxter 47 and there's 337 high schools in the state of Iowa, and then you start looking at the list and there's only Hudson and uh, Logan Magnolia, maybe one more that's higher than us that's a small school. Again, it's test scores and it's student ratio and it's graduation rate and all, all those things play, but they play to somebody who wants to click on, hey, where, I'm, where do I want to go to school? What's a good small school in Iowa? Now you're looking at Baxter as, you know, top, top five for sure and 47th overall. So I was going to get into a little bit of that, but I did already. So that, that was <laughs> the tease that you have on the TV and the radio. That's what it was about. It was just ironic that Sue had talked about that today. So. Thank you, Rob. You bet. Jason? Uh, yeah, so just a couple of things that Rob mentioned already, conferences, you know, having, we had conferences last week, um, and just to have parents in the building, meetings uh, with teachers, face-to-face -face meetings with teachers. Uh, I had just many, many people, teachers and, and parents talking to me about um, positive aspects of that, right? Having those conferences and, and being able to sit and visit with teachers about the progress of their children. Um, so uh, it was it was good. It felt it felt like a conference week. So uh, those types of things, um, I was happy to get back in our building and get those conversations going. Um, the Veterans Assembly, of, as Rob mentioned, you know, just kudos to to Greg and the um, the veterans and, and putting that assembly on and being able. Rob's right, be able to have K twelve in the in the gym um, was a good feeling. It was pretty emotional for some of the elementary kids. Um, we went right to lunch and we had many tears and many um, upset kids. So <laughs> our counseling department was, you know, visiting with kids and our teachers were visiting with kids. And I was carrying around paper towels in the lunchroom and drying eyes and um, wiping ketchup on faces and whatever else with it. But um, so, yeah, that was, um, that was good to have that. And then um, I did want to mention that our conferences fell on that night. So when the you know, when the veterans put on their, um, their program in the evening, you know, that was a little bit um, of a, um, a scheduling <laughs> issue, um, but it worked out pretty well. Our teachers, I want to thank the PTO, or the PTO usually helps provide some meals for teachers on conferences, and our PTO um, provided our staff the veterans meal that night. So, you know, so we were able to all go down and, and the, the, um, eat um, at the veterans meal and to um, help that help their cause out that way. And then thanks to the PTO for helping out there. Um, and then we, we did have a couple staff that had blocked off some time and went down um, for the assembly in the evening um, as well. Um, so that was a good day that way. Um, Do you know what your percentage was for? You said for, they were down. Oh, right? for, you mean for conferences, yeah. people attending conferences? Yeah. I don't have that okay. right off the top of my head um, without grabbing teachers. And, no worries. And it would take me a minute, like, I always have 10,000 tabs open and I had our schedule open. So I could have seen like how many we didn't have filled, how many slots we didn't have filled, but I closed it. So it's okay, no problem. <laughs> which is a you rare, rare event system. for me to yeah. close um, a tab on my computer. Um, so a um, couple just like little things, I think are uh, little things. Uh, today we had donation, I believe, from um, Upper Iowa uh, oh, yeah. yes. with ta tables, desks. Um, that Mr. Adiot, you know, kind of mentioned that we had some options there. We had chairs. some chairs. We had some staff members that um, classrooms that wanted a different table set up. Beginning of the year, we'll put them on hold for that, and then through that donation, they kind of got something similar that they felt like they could make work. And so, um, so I appreciate Pam and her staff. They went down to Upper Iowa and up and down elevators, hauling out tables and chairs and, and just a, a large amount of furniture and and. Initially, I think we thought it was going to cost us something, but Upper Iowa donated that, yeah. so which was yeah. very nice. Um, very yeah, and, and we, you know, we work with Upper Iowa. We have a lot of their teachers come in um, during their teaching program and stuff. So just appreciate that um, that partnership that way, and that they helped us out there. And our, our fourth grade teachers, especially, were pretty happy today to have a new setup in their room and, and get that. And then I noticed some other people reap some benefits that way as well. Um, I do want to mention our counseling department. Um, Lots of things going on. Um, Ms. Hoffman working with a lot of small groups on her time here where she's our shared counselor with Colfax. She's doing a lot of the group type activities. Um, 
uh, finding uh, through data and through recommendations from teachers and stuff and things she's visited with students, um, groups that she can put together that have a similar um, discussion topic or activity that they're working on. This is Mrs. Hoffman. Um, you know, today I saw her and she was, <laughs> was just kind of uh, looked a little tired at the end of the day. And so I think she probably visited individually today with over 10, nine, 10 students, um, which is a lot in a day, you know, um, to, to have in her office and visiting them with them for different reasons and stuff. So um, they're doing a lot of great work with our students along with our teachers supporting us there. One thing I did want to talk about, um, the um, Jasper County United Way um, had a grant to feed um, Jasper County citizens. And so um, our counselors took advantage of that. Um, it's a $1,500 grant. And so they reached out to our families that we weren't gonna like really identify parents or families through Green Reduce or what we just were going to put it out there. Who needs some support um, for meals over the, uh, over the holiday? So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, basically next week, Thanksgiving, um, to help out that way. And, and so um, it's, it's a um, breakfast, lunch, and snack in a box, um, food box, for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, next week. And um, we're helping right now, currently, as of this afternoon, 24 families we're helping out with that next week. Um, and we believe if everything goes the way we want, that we'll be able to work something out for over the Christmas holiday as well. So, um, so there is a need in our community. We, we know that sometimes the need is private. And um, so they wanted to respect that just kind of like they sent out kind of a, a survey, you know, if you need help, please respond back to this and we can help you. And so um, they, you know, we're feeling really happy that we can help out families that are in need that way. And the Christmas giving tree, we're going to have that again. Last year, we did um, gift cards instead of gifts, and we've opted to continue that, um, to continue that um, way of doing things this year. So Janet's um, putting together the families that we've identified for the Christmas giving tree, and she's reached out to local groups, churches, and stuff. Um, a lot of churches are looking to help out that way, and so um, if I remember right, we were over $2,000 donated last year that we gave gift cards. Um, and so I'm at, you know, I just have this feeling that we're going to have that or more um, this year, but um, because people uh, and their generous um, giving. And so um, we're going to do gift cards again to um, local um, Newton um, type businesses, but there's also some of them represented in other communities as well. So um, we're kind of ironing that out. And one thing I did want to mention that, that um, the Hoffmans, our counselors, the Hoffmans are um, uh, partnering with Fairway and Newton actually to get some competitive pricing for those. So Fairway is working with them to kind of help them out with some um, pricing as well for those food boxes. So feel really good about that. Last thing uh, we had, Michael and Dr. Clapper has this in her, her and so I won't talk a whole lot, but the Iowa Best Conference was two weeks ago. So myself, um, Dr. Clapper, uh, Mr. D, and then in our building, Amanda Hoffman. And um, I had two teachers, uh, Mrs. Christensen and Mrs. Jacobs, who had it as part of their um, growth plan for this year. Um, we attended the Iowa Best Conference, which um, BEST, an acronym, is uh, Behavioral, Equitable, Social, Emotional, Trauma-Informed Health in Schools Summit. And so we attended a two-day conference down in Des Moines um, that had a, a huge turnout, right? I think they, they had a huge <coughs> turnout. Basically, you could go to breakouts, a couple of great keynote speakers. Um, some of the main topics are about learning loss and accelerated learning from the pandemic. You know, our students are just having gaps in their in their education and, and things that schools, teachers, et cetera, can do to address that. And then a lot of social, emotional, behavior, health, and well-being categories, as well as um, family, um, community supports as well. So um, feedback, my feedback on it is that I felt um, on some level really excited about some things that we really need to get in place and can put in place. And then I felt sometimes that's a pretty monumental task um, because our students and our families, um, we do recognize that there are social, emotional, mental health behavior needs um, and that, you know, how can we help? And so there was a lot about partnering. There was a lot about um, just things we can be doing. Some, you know, when you pick topics like that, you go sit in, a, you know, maybe directed towards high school. And I was sitting there and we didn't really get that from the description that it was going to be high school based, but um, they tried to include some other things that way. So a really good two days, a really um, um, 
kind of brain filling two days where you come back and have pages of notes and then you're trying to sort it all out and uh, try to fit it into your system or also create new systems um, to support our, our students that way. So yeah, a lot of that. With that um, United Way grant, yep. the 24 families, is that going to be just for Thanksgiving or did, will there be enough left over from, so, uh, for Christmas um, too where they take it? There's a little bit of, um, I, so right now it's just for Thanksgiving, yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's a possibility of some other grant money that they visited with Jasper County about that they're hoping to get their hands on. There may be some left over from this that we can do some stuff too, but. Um, okay. yeah. Was the 1500 for us or was that divvied <clears throat> with other schools? I have a feeling that that's our 1500. That's what I think. Yeah, I'm pretty certain it is. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> certain it's our 1500. And I'm getting that just, I didn't want to confuse that with something else she went down and, and yeah. did earlier in the year. So, but I'm, I wrote that down as our 1500. That's what I mean. So, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions for Jason? Okay, and I see you got a note on the drill team state dance competition. Oh, shoot. shoot. <laughs> that, well, no, Sorry. that's fine. Shoot. Since uh, it's not an out of state, so really no, 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 you did it's it's more, like, yeah, yeah, I just let you know, Julie and I talked about that about something. So the, the drill team goes down to the state dance competition and they spend the night. I think we just we Dr. Clapper and I can approve overnight trips in state. We just let you know when the, when those yeah. are happening. We feel great about it. It happens every year. Um, so thank you. Yeah, sorry. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the SDRC application for 2021. So we need to approve um, a, applying for this. It's $129,363.30. And it's in on-time funding. And it's just because we've had an increase in enrollment. So we just need to have this in our minutes that you guys approve it. And then I have to upload this to the Department of Ed. Anybody have any questions on that? Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we love it. It helps our spending authority. Remember the spending authority that we're working for? Um, it helps that. Basically, it's, we, we get the money since it's in arrears, it would be a year from now unless we requested this now. Right? Right. So, okay. We have a motion to approve our SPRC application for 2021. So moved. Do we have a second? Okay. All in favor, aye. Those aye. same sign. Applications approved. Next item is our K-12 LAU plan for servicing English language learners. Right, and since we currently have no um, English language learner students, it doesn't really impact us, but we still have to have a plan and we still have to upload this plan every year as well. And so it's the same plan we've had for several years, but um, it, it, you know we could have an English language learner move in tomorrow. But we we need to have a plan in place so that we can address their needs. Um, so and, and the plan hasn't changed at all, but um, we still need to approve it. Do we have any questions on that? Motion to approve our English language learners plan is. As presented. We have a second. All in favor, aye. aye. Those same sign. Motion to approve to uh, approve our English language learning plan. Next item on the agenda is open enrollment. So we have an application from Kendra Harris for her children, Peyton and Trenton, to continue attending Southeast Polk. So they moved to the district, but they uh, I recommend we approve it. They just want to continue with their old school. We have a motion to approve the open enrollment application as presented. Second. Motion to have a second. Second. All in favor, aye. Those same sign. Open enrollment approved as presented. Next item is personnel. Kind of, kind of lengthy. And yeah. your resignations is one, and then your contracts is one. Contracts, yeah. So we need to approve the people you said. Okay. Um, approve the resignation of Crystalline as junior class sponsor, the resignation of Ryan Boley as high school English teacher. That's effective at the end of the school year, not now. Um, 
resignation of Janessa Boley, assistant softball coach, resignation of Colby Wagner as assistant high school boys track coach. And that's all their resignations. Any questions on those? Do we have a motion to approve the resignations as presented? So moved. We have a motion to yeah. second. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Those same sign. Resignations are approved as presented. Move into a new contract. So we need to approve a contract for Andrea Burke and Dennis Vaughn as co junior class sponsors. Uh, Dana Buckland as assistant junior high girls basketball coach. Dwight Gleam as head junior high wrestling coach. Dan Toon, head varsity softball coach. And Colby Wagner as head varsity boys track coach. Any questions on those? Rob, did you want to say anything? Um, about. Well, you said something like, I want to talk about the. the oh, yeah, I was going to bring that up. And I knew it was a personnel, just that I, I wanted to thank Zach. And really, we had a lot of times we're looking for head coaches, and the pool was pretty thin. And we had um, three outstanding interviews for the head softball job, talked to a couple people on that the head boys track job. So, um, you know, uh, Dan, who's done some coaching for us in other sports, is outstanding. So, we're pretty excited about him taking over the girls softball. Uh, Colby worked last year and has worked with Dennis Vaughn in the cross country. Um, I think that that's also going to be a really good for us in those two. Uh, Dwight's doing junior high. We didn't have anybody, so he's an assistant. High school wrestling, um, but we worked out a way for him to do both. He's putting time in, but that, that will work. And uh, yeah, we have a twist in his club. Other feedback. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel we felt Zach and I interviewed a lot this last week, week and a half. It was really good fun. So. Any questions on those? We have a motion to approve the contracts as presented. So moved. We have a second. All in favor, aye. Those same sign. Contracts are approved as presented. Facilities, grounds, and transportation. I think I'm saying that Rob said the building's done just in time, but <laughs> it's done, so I think it'll look good. Tomorrow we'll shop the flooring. <laughs> Next item is our superintendent's report. Yeah. Um, so Jason already talked about the Iowa Best Summit, but it was a really, really good two days of learning. But like he said, um, it, it is um, left us inspired, but overwhelmed by the enormity of the needs. So, uh, you know, we, we made some really good contacts. We reached out and talked to some AEA people, some university people. Um, and, and it's just keeping this on our radar. It's like we've got to keep moving forward with this because we can't, um, it's not going away. So we, um, it's overwhelming, but exciting too. And it's, it's exciting that the state is recognizing that this is a problem. I mean, that, that auditorium, it was at Wells Fargo, or not Wells Fargo, um, Iowa Event Center, and it was packed. And the sessions, the um, breakout sessions were packed and there were some great speakers and um, they recognize it as a need. It was a need before COVID and COVID has just magnified the issue, so. It was, it was great. And I do plan to attend that um, Jasper County oh, that, uh, Children's Mental Health Roundtable tomorrow. tomorrow mm -hmm. That Zoom link for that. I've kind of read the agenda here a minute, so, or a minute ago. So, uh, yeah, I'll jump on that in the morning. Yeah. So, I mean, we're just, we're, we've really had our eyes opened up to just some, some pretty major needs. So, but it's nice to know that there's support. The state is seeing that, they, that we need help. So, that's good. Um, the district leadership team. We've been meeting and then we're really excited. We're going to bring our um, our work to the full staff on the 22nd, on the morning of the 22nd, and um, get their feedback and about our vision and mission and core values work. And then we're going to take it to the SIAC. And then we're really excited that we're going to bring it to you guys in December and hopefully get your blessing and then roll it out um, when we come back from Christmas break. Um, and it all started back with the SIAC in the, in the spring. We took their feedback and then we've just gone through so many meetings and so many iterations of it and it really is um 
something I, I, something that we're really excited about. So I'm excited to have you guys see that in December. Um, Jason, Rob, and I are, are still working on our shared goals. Um, we're in the process of analyzing it. Like they said, we everybody has been so busy that we were subbing and doing everything else that we hadn't even really had time to even get on our timeline, but we finally had a little time to get back to the business of actually leading schools. And so it's been really refreshing to, to start looking at some of that data. So um, we're digging into that and then we're gonna use that to plan our, our PD going forward, especially for next year. Um, and Wendy's gonna be a huge part of that and the AEA is helping us with that as well. And then, um, the William Penn program, this was this was really cool. Um, we had a representative um, from William Penn come and meet with our paras and uh, let's see, was it last Wednesday? And um, just talk to them about their Grow Your Own program and some of the opportunities. So what kind of in a nutshell, what it is, is a para can continue working full time like at your school and then they can do online classes on Zoom in like one week, it's like a Wednesday and then like a couple Saturdays a month or something like that. And um, they cap the tuition at $5,000 a year and they help them fill out financial aid forms and you know any of that so they can get loans and that sort of thing, um, they'll pay for it. And so at the end of four years, as long as you, you know, follow your course of study, they, they'd have to take one semester off to student teach, but at the end of it, they would be fully licensed teachers. And so they, so we actually, we probably had, I'd say eight to 10 paras that went to the meeting. And then we probably had three or four that actually filled out the postcard and, and met with them a little bit and said, hey, I might really be interested in this. And I mean, it's a wonderful opportunity. And um, they talked about even like finding kids in your school who are maybe junior, seniors who are interested in a career in education. and if they aren't the kind of kid that necessarily really wants to move out and you know go to you and i and become a teacher they they could stay working in your district you could hire you know brand new graduates and put them in your school as a para they can work full time for four years and then have a degree and a, at the meantime they'd be getting all sorts of on the job training and you'd be growing your own and then the thought is then that you could hire them if you have an opening and you you know, it'd be a known quantity. We're like, what a great idea. I mean, it's all this, we've all been saying, what are we gonna do? There's no teachers, there's no teachers, but we can't just keep wringing our hands. So I super appreciate some of these universities saying, what can we do, like, how can we do things differently to start to help support this program? And another thing that we've thought about um, is uh, we've, we're still working out the details of this, but we have some seniors who have an off block who we want to consider hiring just during their off block to work with some, as with kids because I mean they're just hanging around like in the, the collaboration space because I know classroom work on homework or whatever but we could hire them you know one period a day and use them as paras and then I've even thought and we've had this conversation Jason Rob and I and said is there some kids that we could kind of pull in and say like hey have you ever thought of going into teaching you know like just trying to use this as a, a means to foster kids of their, their potential maybe wanting to become a teacher because we can't continue doing what we're doing and think we're going to get a different result. So we're really excited about these kind of potential programs. So, um, but the William Penn one, I was really, really excited about. Yeah. And then just the last thing is like, I'm looking forward to the conference tomorrow. So we spent all day together tomorrow. So, um, so for those of you here, um, the IASB at the Iowa School Board Association conference is tomorrow. And so we are really, really blessed at Baxter because not a lot of districts have this, but all five of our board members take the day off. And for as long as I've, all my years here, they've all five taken vacation from their own jobs and come to the conference and they spend the whole day learning and growing and just, um, it, it's been a great, the, the two times I've been, last year was canceled. But the other two times that I've been with them, it's been wonderful. Like two years ago, we actually presented, was it me and you, John, did a presentation about superintendent evaluation. I mean, it's just a really, really great day of professional learning for us and for, for the board. And so we're really excited about that. Not excited about the 7 a.m. pickup time. <laughs> but otherwise, yeah, that's um, three that, that's true. Yeah. I thought about that actually when those kids were talking about three, I'm like, well, I'll stop complaining about 7 a.m. Everyone else is eight. You 
reward somebody. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. 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 So anyway, yeah, I mean things are things are going well. So um, and we're just looking forward to Thanksgiving and then Christmas breaks and the concerts and it's just nice to have things kind of back to normal. We've got jolly holiday night. I know that's not a school thing, but it's gonna be here at the school. It's just fun to see things sort of back to normal again. So yeah. That's all we've got for you. Everything. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion to have second. second. In favor, aye. 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 A